When I went almost in the mountain, the creator didn't ask me if I were, was Indian. He didn't ask me if I was white. Um, it heard my call and it answered my call. When I first heard some of the Native American teachings, I just, I remember weeping, talking about all things that being connected, as I understand it, and that what you take, you must give back. There's a lot of people out there getting involved, interested in shamanism, uh, curious about shamanism, uh, and so the idea was to provide some sort of base for the white culture. I, I can treat my products with respect, I can know who the artist is, but if someone buys it that doesn't want to use it respectfully, that's, that's not my responsibility. I'm called to do speaking engagements all over the country on this wisdom, so as, as the person becomes more popular, they can't really do what they want. This is really my love, to be here with these Native American people. And the Church of Loving Hands is a church of natural healing in medicine ways. And our primary tenant is to facilitate individual spiritual expression in all daily activities of life. You can always tell a white person when they give the Indian name. It's always these, these Hollywood type of names, you know, a Rolling Thunder or, or uh, a Swift Deer or... or uh... <laughs> yeah, you can always tell that kind of stuff, and they're always English names, so to speak. Uh, I think that's ridiculous because there's no... they don't know the reason why they have names. They don't have naming ceremonies. And the name come to me when I was writing something about my grandmother. And uh, I kept thinking about other names, other things, and other things. And, and this little voice said, nope, you are a wind feather. Those people, Brooke Medicine Eagle, Jim Silver Eagle. Why don't they pick up a name like Bloody Guts? Something, you know, that doesn't have that, that ring of, of uh, power and spirituality. My name is Skyhawk Oyela. My Anglo-Saxon name is Rosalind. And I'm a Métis medicine woman of Blackfoot and Ojibwa heritage. I got my name on my vision quest, and I felt firm. This is my name. Um, I knew I heard it. It felt right. It resonated in my being. And no one can take that from me. People can mock it as they want. People can, you know, do whatever they wish with it. But I feel it in my being, and, and that that describes who I am. But the Indian name comes from a very honored place and a very special, you know, like a family carrying on its tradition through its name, you know. Um, those are treated with great respect and honor. We don't just pluck names out of somewhere, you know. Great spirit, pure our hearts. Let our voices express our joy and our connectedness here as one people at one fire. Who? Oh. I was an Indian in the previous life. Well, you're white now. <laughs> yeah, these guys in the previous life, they always were uh, uh, kings or queens. Or I used to be uh, the Duchess of Earl when I was... I mean, I never, I never met a guy... You know, I worked at Standard Oil when I was in the previous life. I s swept up the toilet. It's always this kind of stuff.
A medicine man could be viewed by his own tribe as one of the most powerful sources of inspiration, revelation, and healing. Uh, but the assumption would be if he was wearing a three-piece suit and carrying a briefcase, he probably would be dismissed uh, by the uh, outsiders. This is not the case within the tribe. Uh, within the tribe, uh, material goods often do not play a part in how we assess and treat each other and hold each other in respect. So the case of the uh, plastic shaman, if you may, uh, then is very close to the pretend Indian. Both operate off a list of symbols, and they are more concerned with the arrangement of these symbols and the display of these symbols uh, than they are with the content and, and context uh, behind these symbols. People keep it th thinking that what we do is, is Indian spirituality. Uh, you know, certainly the circle and the drum is a common human heritage, and yet somehow people see that as being Indian. And so I think that's, that's a lot of what we're getting from the Center for the Spirit and J.C. Eagle Smith and other people that attack us who don't really know what we do. They haven't really experienced it. The heart of it is three days and nights fasting. And we do use the medicine wheel as a metaphor, but other than that, I don't, I have to tell you honestly, I don't know how Native Americans do lead vision quest other than stories I've heard. I haven't experienced it. twin flames represent the balance that we all seek within ourselves and without. May this be brought in with us tonight. What this, what this um, replication of Indians uh, ceremony uh, points out to me are two things. Number one, there's a spiritual vacuum that this society that we live in, it creates people that are looking for something that's real. And uh, secondly, and sadly, sometimes they get Native Americans involved in teaching them these things. But that points out the uh, poverty and lack of opportunity on Indian land. People are so frustrated and desperate that uh, they'll do anything for money. <laughs> 